Mr. Charles Lawton stars in Payment Deferred from Studio One at CBS. We're never moving away from this house, haven't you? We're never. We'll stay in if we have to buy the place ourselves. Really, Will? Where would we find the money? We'll find it. We've got to find it. With a moment from Payment Deferred by Jeffrey Dell and C.S. Forrester, we invite you to Studio One, a full hour of dramatic entertainment from Radio's own Playhouse. And now to introduce tonight's great story, here is the director of Studio One, Fletcher Markle. Tonight, one of the great melodramas in the literature of the theater. A dark portrait of a very simple man and his wife involved in very simple circumstances which lead, unfortunately, to a not-so-simple crime. Murder. As chilling as a scream in a dark room, as unnerving as a charmed snake, payment deferred is always worthy of revival. And especially worthwhile when the play's principal character is performed by the actor who originated the part on the stage and in motion pictures, and who in fact made his first appearance in America in the role of Will Marble, whose payment for murder was deferred. A very great actor of unique and quite unrivaled talents, Mr. Charles Lawton. Also at the microphone tonight is one of radio's own great performers, taking time out from her rehearsals with Mr. Lawton in his forthcoming New York production of Galileo to play Annie Marble for us. Miss Hester Sondergaard. Here with Vincent McConnor's version for listening of our story of fear and suspense and murder in a suburb of London. Did you say it's been empty, Mr. Hammond? Matter of two years. I can't understand with a housing shortage. How can a house stay vacant for two years? Well, sir, I suppose I'd better tell you before somebody else does. There's been murder done in this house. Murder? You don't say. You remember the marble case? I do indeed. Read about it in the papers. This is the house, then? Where he killed her? The same. Does that throw you off? Because if it does, there's no use me showing you around. The house in the marble case. <laughs> I have a mind to take it without even looking at it. Tell me, Mr. Hammond, living just next door, you must have known him. Well, indeed I did. I gave evidence in the case, being agent for the house. Fact of the matter, I was one of the principal witnesses. Mm, I followed it in the papers. Uh, wasn't there some sort of cupboard here in the hall they talked about at the trial? There was. A glass-fronted cupboard. It stood right here. See the marks on the wall here? And that's where he kept the bottle, the poison bottle. Along with all his other photographic stuff. Now, if you'll step through this door... Yes. Right? And this would be the room where he sat for hours at a time. The very same. What do you suppose was behind it all? If only a house could talk. You'd hear how it happened. How it really was. Yes. If only a house could talk... The way I see it, she nagged him about money matters. Morning to night. Nag, nag, nag. Bills, bills, bills. You just tell her how to manage. I'll give you money, but what becomes of it? You spend every penny and we still get all these bills. I can't manage with what you give me, Will. I simply can't. I try. But you've got to, you've got to manage, dear. Well, you should run this house yourself for a week. One week, that's all I ask. You'd find out very quickly how difficult it is. I try my best, but... I'll give you three pounds every week. Fifty-two weeks of the year. Three pounds. It isn't enough for the three of us. Really, it isn't. Everything's so terribly high. Well, just look at these bills. Well, there are lots of things there I've never ordered. If, the, if, the, if there's bills, you ordered them. No, dear. A lot of them are yours. Oh, meaning? Well, all those photography things, for instance. I'm not the one in this family who snaps pictures. I haven't done any photography for months. I know. But if you'll just look at the chemist's bill, there's a whole lot of things down there for last month. Films and hypo and that that bottle of what you call it, acid. 
I didn't order that. In fact, the matter, I don't even know what it is. I shouldn't know how to order it. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. Well, it looks as if it might come in useful, that bottle of what you may call it, acid. What do you mean? Useful for what? Well, it's poison. That's what that is. We may need a drop before we're through. We'll marble. Oh, it's soon over, so I've heard soon over. Oh, how can you say such a thing? It may come to it yet. It's getting too much for me, Annie. I can't sleep at night, so I lay awake at night thinking and thinking. Oh, so do I. It worries me terribly. Heaven knows I don't like to run up bills. But if you don't give me enough money to manage... Well, something's got to be done, and quickly. Yes, Will. But what? You tell me that if you can. What? <laughs> for me to think without all this noise. My head's splitting. Oh, is it very bad, Will? Bad as the one the first of last month? I don't know what you call bad, but my head's breaking in two. Oh, poor dear. Yeah, I see we have another letter from that nasty little grocer. I asked you to tell him we'd settle his account next month. Yes, I told him, Will, but he wouldn't listen. Said we'd had quite long enough already and he was going to... Going to What? He said he was putting the entire matter in the hands of his solicitors. We'll hear from them. If the bank had any idea of the mess we're in, it would mean the workhouse for me. The workhouse? Oh, what would the neighbors say, Mrs. Hammond and the others? I just couldn't face it. The neighbors will be glad to see us in the mess. They've always hated me just because I wear a bowler hat to the office and dress respectable. And it's your fault, Annie, your fault that we're in debt like this. Can I practice now, Father, please? No, you cannot! One more thump out of that piano and I'll start thumping it with an axe. It hadn't rained tonight. It's coming down as though it had never stopped. The rain's good for the garden. Besides, we're not going out. I don't suppose you stopped by the grocer's today. Uh, yes, Will, I did. Did you remember to ask him about my brandy? Well, it wasn't any use. I was just about to tell you. He was really quite rude. Oh? What did he say? Well, it did only make you angry, dear, and I don't want to do that tonight. Tell me what he said. Well, he said something about being tired of standing new drinks. Oh, he did, did he? I'll get even with him for that one of these days. Just you wait. When a chap's down like I am, he's got to take that sort of thing. It's hard when you're half out of your mind with worry and want to sleep not to have a drink now and then. Oh, I'm sorry, Will. I tried, really. I did. Not a pound to me name. Just when I have the, the opportunity of a lifetime. A fine chance to make a bit of real money for myself. Oh, Will, oh, what are you talking about? Oh, it's foreign bonds. I got a line on them at the bank this morning, under quiet, of course. Somebody's going to make a fortune. And here I am without a bean. It's just my cursed luck. Who could that be? You can't imagine. Go and see, Winnie. Yes, ma'am. It's probably Charlie Ammon from next door looking for a free drink. Well, he's going to get fooled. Only two small ones in the bottle. I'll need a miss, sir. Oh, does Mr. Marble live here? Yes. Won't you come in? That's not Charlie Ammon. Well, they've probably come to take me off to the workhouse. I will. You mustn't even say such a thing. Well, that'll happen sooner or later. It's someone for you, Father. Uh, Mr. Marble? Yes? I don't expect you remember me. Can't say that I do. Oh, and for good reason. I must have been about four when you last saw me, before we moved to Australia. My name's Medland. Medland? Yes, Jim Medland. My mother was your sister, wasn't she? It's Wynn's boy. Well, this is a surprise. Oh, you, you, you do seem taken aback. Well, you must excuse me, my then. Going to be a bit of a turn, you coming in sudden like that. Well, now this is my wife, Annie, uh, your aunt, uh, that is. How do you do, ma'am? Nicely, thank you. 
fancy you coming back to England. Well, I'm sorry to burst in on you without letting you know, but I, I've only just landed from down under. I'm oh, sure we're very I'm... pleased to see you. Very pleased. Indeed we are. Winnie? Here's a new cousin for you. This is our girl, our Winnie. <laughs> How do you do? Hello. We named her after your mother, you know. Well, you must sit down a bit and uh, tell us all the news. Well, first, I'd I better get rid of my cab. Your cab? Yes, he, he's waiting. I wasn't sure I'd got the right place. Oh, I see. Well, I shan't be a moment. Cab? Hey. Oh, Will. He might be able to help us. I know, I know. Did you see his coat? That's worth a tenner if it's worth a penny. And his wallet? Bulging with pound notes? You can't get over here from Australia unless you've got a bit. You leave this to me. What a bit of luck, eh? What about drinks? You'll have to offer. Ah, I fear I shan't. I'm not wasting that on a mere boy. He probably doesn't drink anything. Hey, look out. Oh, oh, what a night. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, come in and get warm. You must be frozen. Uh, put, your, put your coat on this chair, my lady. Well, thank you, Aunt right Will. Well, and uh, how's your mother after all this time? Mother died six months ago. Oh, I say, I had no idea. That's terrible, that is. She never really got better after the shock of father's death. Tom dead, too? You don't say. Well, upon my soul, that is rough and no mistake. Haven't you any brothers or sisters? No, none. Last I heard, 15 years ago, your father had some sort of a job with a shipping firm. That's right. He started on his own soon afterwards. About five years ago, he bought up his own company. Is that so? He must have done pretty well for him, so... Oh, yes. And you, uh, carry on the good work, I Oh, no. When, when he died, Mother sold out. So I was too young to take over then. So I only left college last summer. Really? <laughs> Gentleman of leisure, eh? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, but only for the moment. I shall want something to do, of course. I thought I'd take a look round first. Oh, did you ever manage to find us? Oh, it wasn't very difficult. I thought I'd look you up right away. Yes, quite right, too. Uh, I'm afraid we can't put you up in the spare room because we haven't got one. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I, I hope it didn't seem as if I was asking to be... Oh, I'll go to a hotel. That's what I planned. Have you seen many kangaroos? Oh, yes, rather. I've hunted them quite a bit. Oh, I say. Kangaroos. What will she be thinking of next? Oh, sure, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's uh, not bedtime already, surely. Oh, uh, yes, I... Oh, dear. Well, don't you bother to sit up, Annie. If your head's bad, I expect Jim will excuse you if you feel you'd rather go on up with Winnie. Oh, I say, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't realize you were feeling rotten. I I'll go. Oh, no, no, please. You stay and talk to Will for a bit. He so seldom gets anybody fresh to talk to. I I'll just say good night now, if you don't mind. Oh, of course not. Good night. Good night. You'll be sure to come again soon, won't you? Oh, yes. Thanks. <laughs> Winnie? Haven't you got a kiss for your old father? Yes, father. <laughs> yes, my girl. <laughs> good night, cousin Jim. Good night, Winnie. I'll say good night too, dear. In case I'm asleep when you come up. Oh, if you are, I shan't disturb you. Sleep well. Good night. <laughs> no. Well then, Jim, we can have a quiet chat without the ladies. Sit here, by the fire. I suppose you plan to look up some of your father's people? Oh, no. I don't think there are any. Not in England, at any rate. I think you're the only relatives I've got. Really? I don't know anyone at all except you and Aunt Annie. I see. I was thinking that as I came along in the taxi just now. It made me feel sort of, well, lonely. Oh, I say, I'm afraid this is awful wrong. Not at all. I understand exactly what you mean exactly. Uh, did your mother ever tell you anything about my job, I wonder? What's well, to do with a bank or something like that, isn't uh, it? The Counter National Foreign Exchange Department. Been in it all my life, buying and selling, you know. Oh, I'm afraid I don't understand that kind well, of thing. Well, few people do, you know. It, it, it's a bit of luck, you turning up tonight. I might be able to do you rather a good turn. How do you mean? Well, I heard a rumor today. Certain foreign bonds are going up. Anybody who buys will make a 
packet. If one knows the ropes, one can buy on what's called margin, and this is the sort of chance fellas in my job wait years for. Oh, I'm not very keen about that sort of thing, Uncle Will. <laughs> you don't object to making money, do you? If you bought on margin, you might realize a tremendous profit. As much as a thousand percent. Well, I've never had much to do with financial matters. Oh, you don't have to know anything about it. You just take my word. Well, the truth it. is, I don't much like the sound of it. What do you mean you don't like the sound of it? Do you think I'm suggesting something that isn't straight? Well, of course not, but... Because if you do, we can just forget the entire matter. Oh, please, Uncle Will, I meant no offense. I couldn't pinch your precious money. Couldn't touch it, if that's what you're afraid of. If everything would be in your name every step of the way. If I did this, what would you stand to gain? Well, now, if it came off, you certainly wouldn't grudge your uncle a commission, would you, my boy? I'm sorry, I, I don't care to risk it. Don't you be a young fool. This is the chance of your lifetime. I wouldn't suggest you going into it unless I was sure it had come off. Now, you take my advice and think it over. But I don't need that... to think it over. I'm quite certain now. I see. Well, let's not talk about it anymore. I, uh, I think I'd, I'd better explain. No, please. But I've had a bit of uh, trouble lately. I've, uh, well... I don't see why you shouldn't know, seeing that you're one of the family. It's over, money. I'm very sorry. If I don't lay my hands on a hundred pounds, it means the workhouse for me. Oh, really? Is it, is it that bad? You're old enough to stand what that means to anyone who's always kept himself respectable. I think the shame of it will kill me, my wife and child. I don't know which way to turn, and there's no one else I can ask. It's all, almost as though you were sent here tonight, as though it were intended, Oh, Jim. But, but Uncle Will... Could you lend me a hundred pounds? I... Just, well, just till the end of the month. I swear I'll pay it back, every cent. I... Well, I really haven't got it to spare. I'm sorry I came here tonight. Oh, yeah, you're not going. I mustn't uh, let you not, not like this. I should never forgive myself. I'd feel that you'd never come here again. Well, to be perfectly frank, I probably won't. Oh, no, no, no. I came no. straight here as soon as I reached England, looking forward to seeing my own people. You're the only family I've got left. So I've been here 15 minutes, if that, and you've done nothing but try and get money out of me one way or another. So, oh, I wish I hadn't come. And you're quite justified, Jim, then. I've behaved very badly. I'm awfully sorry. No, you were quite right. It's no use my apologizing. I do ask one thing, though. Have a, have a drink with me before you go. Just to show there's no ill feeling. Of course, Uncle Will, I'll be glad to. I'll just, a uh, little brandy in the cupboard out in the hall. Here, just take a look at this picture while I fetch the drinks. Oh, I say, this is your wedding photograph. I won't be a minute. Do you recognize anybody in that photo? I say, Aunt Annie was a beautiful girl, wasn't she? What I said Aunt Annie was quite a beauty. Annie, did you say? Oh, the wind's blowing, so I can't hear you. That storm's much worse. Now then, here we are. What was it you were saying? Say, isn't this mother here in the photo? Yes, uh, she's over there to the left, standing next to Annie. Uh, a drop of brandy should warm us both, eh? Uncle Will, I'm... I'm very sorry what I said a moment ago. Not at all. I deserved every word of it. I didn't mean it. I, I really didn't. Don't you even think about it. You just came at a bad time and I wasn't quite myself. I lost sight of my manners. Here's your glass. Thank you. Well, cheer up. Well, drink up. Oh, oh. Has anyone been here? No. Who do you mean, dear? Anyone, you sure? Of course, dear. Why? Oh, nothing. Is anything the matter? No. Where's Winnie? In the kitchen. Did she come straight back from school? Yes, I think so. Straight in here to you? Yes. Why? I just wondered, that's all. Did you settle with Evans and the others? Yes. It was very generous of Jim to lend you the money, wasn't it? Yes. Doesn't every boy act like that? Especially not knowing us very well. No. We must do everything we can to see that he's paid back, Will. Of course. 
In time. Whatever happened last night, Will? What do you mean? Your clothes. I found them this morning, covered with mud. I fell down in the street. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why you were stiff then? Yes, that's it. Shook me up, brother. You're sure you're not hurt, Will? You look so white. Oh, it's nothing. How'd you come to fall? I don't quite know. It was dark. I went with the young Jim to find a taxi. It was pouring as well. Who's that? Well, I see. What was the matter, Will? Oh, I just don't feel very well, Annie. It's nothing. It's well, you've got a bit of cold, that's what. Morning, Mrs. Marvel. Oh, Mr. Hammond. Hello, uh, Will. Oh, it's you. Who did you think it was? Oh, how goes it? All right, thanks. He was looking a bit off colour, isn't he? Oh, he got very wet last night. We had a young... Visit. I wish you'd stop talking about me not being well. It's absolute nonsense. Started gardening at your time of life, Will. What? I noticed your backyard this morning. Been digging a bit, haven't you, those weeds? I haven't touched them. Must be that dog from up the street always straying about. Mm. Yeah, you have a drink. Well, don't mind if I do. Annie... We shall want another glass. I broke one last night. Oh, well, I'll get one from the whole cupboard. Is in the new shop, Mrs. Marvel. Oh, the one at the corner? No, they've got some very nice things. Yes, it's a French woman, Madame Collins. Doesn't sound French. Well, that's because she married an Englishman. She's French, all right. You haven't seen her? No, I don't think so. What are you watching through the window, Will? That's Smithers boy. His son is born into our garden. Get away from there, you little rascal! Get out of my garden, you will! Get away! Stay away, you little devil! Get away! Stay away, you little devil! Well, have you seen this, Madam Collins? Right. Boop for speed, if ever a girl was. You'll have to keep an eye on the old man, Mrs. Marble. <laughs> hey, Will? I don't know. Yeah, what's this envelope, Penny? Well, I'm sure I've no idea. It's addressed to you, dear. I left it there on the table. You should tell me when I have mail. Oh, I didn't think it looked important. Such a small envelope meant to tell you. You never tell how important a letter might be from the envelope. What an earth? What? Well, I must say. What is it, Will? A notice for us to vacate. What? Uh, <clears throat> that's why I dropped over this afternoon. The owner asked me to speak to all the tenants in the block. He says we've got to get out within a month. He said to tell you he can let you have another house, cross town, do it cheap. We are not leaving here. But will, if they say... The owner's putting all these houses up for sale. We are not leaving here. We are stopping here if we have to buy the place. Buy it, see? Oh. Will, how can you buy it? Besides, do we want to? There must be lots of other places. I don't care if there are a thousand other places. I'm going to have this place. But, Will, dear, how are you going to find the money? We'll find it, I tell you. We've got to. Mother? Yes, dear? What's this mean, this book Father's been reading? It's called Medical Jurisprudence. What does that mean? Well, you're the one who's in school. Ask your teachers these things. That's what they're for. Seems to be all about poison. Annie, Annie, what are you? In here, Will. Put that book down before he finds you with it. We'll only have another scene. Put it down this minute, you hear? Oh, all right. I've done it, Annie. I've done it. Yes, Will? I've pulled off a deal. You mean you made a bit of money? A bit, just enough to keep us in luxury for the rest of our lives, that's all. Will Marble, did you stop in the pub on your way home? I've cleared the right side of 30,000 pounds. Father! 30,000? How can you have made all that, Will Marble, in one day? That's because I'm not quite such a fool as you thought. You'll have all the money you want for the house and new clothes and a fine school for winning. You mean I can go away to school? Will, this isn't a joke, is it? Come away from that window and talk to me. Because if it is a joke... The truth, every word I'm saying. I've got to know, Will, how you made all this money. A little deal in bonds, that's how. Just a question of knowing the right time to buy it. Well, how could you buy them? Where did you get the money? This won't mean you lose your job, will it? Lose a job? The job's already lost me. Twenty years of being ordered about by stupid nobodies. I've had quite enough of that sort of thing, thank you. I'm independent now. 
You and Winnie can have anything you want. You just name it, it's yours. You heard him, Mum. Anything we want. Just name it. Go ahead, Mum. What would you like? Well, I... I've always wanted a house in the country. House? Yes. House in the country. It could be just a little place. Anything so we could move away from here. I've always hated this house. Ever since we came here, I've hated it. I'm sorry we can't move, not ever. I've told you that before. But now that you have money... You said Mum could have anything she wanted. Exactly one hour ago, I stepped in at the owner's office and bought this house. Bought it? Oh, Will, no, you didn't. We'll fix it up anyhow you want, but we're not moving away. We're staying here the rest of our lives. Winnie... You run outside for a bit. All right, Mum. Well, call me when tea's ready. Well, I don't quite know how to say this. What is it now? You've got to tell me. All about it, I mean. About what? I'd never blame you. Whatever you've done, really I wouldn't. It frightens me not knowing you've got to tell me everything. I don't know what you're talking about. I couldn't help guessing, dear. You look so worried and that jumping whenever anyone comes to the door. What have you guessed? I couldn't help it. I've tried to think that it wasn't true. Tried to pretend to myself that it was all my imagination. But all the time, I knew. You knew what? I just wondered what I'd do if the bank sent someone here when you were out. The bank? I wouldn't know what to do. If they came and I was here all by myself, after they discover the money's gone, I mean. You see, I guess the truth. But I understand, Will. Must have been a great temptation. Our debts and all that money about, just for the taking. Will, what is it? Well, I was bound to know eventually, wasn't I? Oh, don't, Will, don't. What is it, dear? What have I said? Danny, you'll be the death of me. What do you mean? You know, I robbed the bank. Stolen the money. Well, what then? You'll be the death of me, Annie. The From Studio One, radio's own playhouse of dramatic entertainment, you're hearing Charles Lawton in Payment to Furs. From Studio One, we continue tonight's full hour dramatic entertainment. Charles Lawton stars in Fletcher Markle's production of Payment to Furs. I say, look here. Madame Collins has some very attractive things in her windows. <laughs> look at that hat. <laughs> Imagine me in a fancy affair like that. Come along in, Annie. <laughs> After you, dear. You will. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Can I help you? Well, uh, yes, I, uh, I, I'd, I'd like... Uh, my wife uh, wishes to purchase a dress, something very smart for a seashore. But, but not too fancy. Not too, too French. Just one moment. I'll call Madame Collins. Will, it all looks so expensive. No, Annie, Annie, I could buy it. a bit of material and make my some, myself something. Then we can afford it, my dear. Bonjour, bonjour. Oh, Madame wishes to see a gown. Well, yes. Uh, I would. Step back here, if you will, madame. I will show you my collection. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, 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 monsieur, not you. You sit oh. here. I have these very comfortable chairs, especially for husbands. When madame is selected a gown, we shall put it on and show it to you. Oh, but I want Mr. Marble to help me select it. Oh, me no, madame. He would only interfere. Will. Sit down, uh, monsieur. Sit down. We will be uh, back presently. <laughs> Well, monsieur, 
Your wife has made her selection. Oh, good, good. She is trying it on and will come out presently for you to approve. Uh, you are the celebrated Monsieur Marble, are you not? Oh, I don't know so much about the celebrated. Oh, there, you are too modest. The fortune that you have made is very well known. All my customers talk about it. Do they, though? They say how clever you are with affairs. My husband, he understands nothing about affairs, nothing. So I have no one to advise me. Well, of course, if there's anything I can do at any time, I'm delighted to uh, let him uh... I should like some time to talk with you. I should feel honored. Oh, you are very, very good. <laughs> now, do you smoke? Oh, uh, no, not here in the shop. Oh, of course, I understand. It's, uh... Oh, c'est ravissant, your cigarette case. It is a present from a lady, I'm sure. Well, no, uh, matter of fact, I bought it myself. Oh, but I cannot listen to such a story. <laughs> no, really, it's the truth. It's uh, funny we haven't met before, isn't it? Uh, living so close, I mean. Oh, I'm glad today we have met. The people I meet here are so dull. Lately, I'm getting so bored. I wonder if Annie isn't nearly ready. Do you want me to call her? No. Well, then? I say, what's your name? My name? Why, Colin. I mean, what else? Marguerite. But my friends, they call me Rita. Including me? If you like. I think that your wife may be a little surprised, eh? I shouldn't call you that in front of her. Oh, I think you're a very naughty man. <laughs> it's your fault, you know, if I am... <laughs> My fault? And why, if you please? Mm, you're so... Well, I can't tell you where, can I? Oh, and why not? It's a nice bit of lace, there. Yeah. You think so? Oh, oh you, you must not do that. It's very, very wrong for you to kiss I'm me. I'm sorry, but I couldn't help it. You look so wonderful. I've never met anybody like you before. I would like to have a talk sometime, somewhere where we shan't be interrupted. I wonder if we could fix it somehow. Well, it... But that is for you to say, is it not? Look here, I'll tell you what. If I could manage to get away one evening, could you meet me somewhere in town and have a bit of supper? Well, I... You could manage it, couldn't you? You must. You, you'd like to come, wouldn't you? Oh, I think it would be delightful. I'm very lonely sometimes. My husband is in the nursing home. What about supper tomorrow night? Call for me here. 7.30. 7.30. much of leaving you at home all alone, Will. We've never been separated, not since we were married. Well, it's impossible for me to come to the seashore, dear. There's several business matters to be attended to. Perhaps I'll join you and Winnie later. You need a change more than any of us. You're so pale, Will. You just sit here and look out at the garden. And yet you won't go out in the garden for a bit of sun. I don't want to go into the garden. Lately, you're so different, Will. What do you mean, different? So nervous and jumpy and nervous. You never used to be like this. Now, look here, Annie. I am not going away, and that's definite. Well, I'll have to get someone to come in and look after you. You'll do nothing of the sort. How many times must I tell you that I do not want strangers nosing about the place? Sorry. You and Winnie go and enjoy yourselves at the seashore. Well, it's so generous of you. You've been most thoughtful ever since you made that money. I hate you to think I'm ungrateful. But I don't like going off, leaving you all alone. No, I don't want to hear another word, Annie, not a word. You're leaving for Bournemouth in the morning, you and Winnie. You'll be away about uh, three weeks, eh? Yes. If I could be sure, you'll be all right. Well, don't you give another thought to me. Mother! I shall be all right. Yes, Winnie? There are two bags in the attic cupboard. Which do you want us to take? Two bags? There can't be. I want the brown leather suitcase. The one we took to Margaret four years ago. What's this? Mum sent me to the attic to get another bag. Attic, I told you never to go out there. Never. The father! You're not to step foot there again. Do you hear me? But, Will, we need an extra bag. Why didn't you tell me? I would have got it for you. I don't know what that second bag could be. It's got a big label on it. Euston Station. Euston Station? Well, it's my bag. 
Your bag, Will? An old one that I had at the back. Brought it home when I gave up my job. Put it in the attic and forgot about it. I never knew you had another bag, Will. You don't have to know everything about me, do you, Annie? I can have a bag without your knowing it, can't I? Well, of course you can. I didn't mean that at all. Really, Will, you're so tired. I, I suppose we forget about the bag. I'll go up and bring down the brown leather suitcase so that you can finish your packing. <laughs> Your family comes back from the seashore next week? I'm afraid so. Uh, these three weeks, they've gone so quick. You don't know what it's meant to me, Rita. Our meetings and talks. At times, I've almost managed to forget. That you have a wife? No, no, not that. That is all right. What then? What is it you have almost managed to forget? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Will, I must talk to you about my business Oh, not again. this evening, Rita. Oh, yes. darling, do you not care what happens to me? Of course I do. You ought to know that, Rita. Then you will do for me something which I shall ask. Well, that depends. Will, I... I must have 300 pounds. What? You don't want much, do you? 300 pounds? Oh, well, if I do not get it quickly, I, I must be made bankrupt. Yes, but 300, that's a lot of money, that is. Oh, not for you. Oh, yes, it is. I can't afford to go splashing money about like that. Oh, dear, that is always the way. You say that you love me. You, you say that you are grateful. It is I who have given everything, and you... That's not fair, Rita. You talk as if I hadn't done anything for you. You had a tenner only yesterday. And it go to the nursing home to pay for my husband. I do not have one penny. And the other twenty just before that. You seem to think I'm made of money, Rita. But do we like... Now, there's no need to go on like this, Rita. I... I don't say but what I might be able to manage a little towards it. Oh, darling, you're so kind always. Don't you love me a little <sighs> tiny bit? And I love you so much. Rita, you know I do. When you come close to me, I'll do anything you ask, anything. <laughs> Annie, what's the meaning of this? Coming home in the middle of the night. Help us with these bags, Will. Just set them there in the hall. Winnie, you go straight up to bed. Oh, but Ma. At once, you hear me this instant. Oh, all right. Good night, Father. Good night. Oh, I'll unpack in the morning. Annie. Oh, Will. Why are you home so soon? Is anything wrong? You weren't supposed to come back for another week. Let's go into the parlor, Will. I have to talk with you. Well, can't you wait until I close the door? Why couldn't you have taken the morning train? I couldn't wait another minute. Oh, Will, what have you done? What have you done? What are you talking about? This bag. The bag Winnie found the day she went up in the attic. The bag with the label Euston Station. What about that bag? I know whose bag it is. I found out, Will. I told you it's my bag. I thought it was strange. He never called us or came back after that first night. Who never came back? The boy from Australia. Wynn's boy. What have you found out, Annie? What is it? A piece in the time this morning. I have it here in my purse. What kind of a piece? What's it say? Here it is. I tore it from the personal column of the front page. Here, here it Information is sought as to the whereabouts of James Medlin. Medlin came to England from Australia in May of the present year. Any persons knowing the present residence of Mr. Medlin should communicate with his solicitors, Shane and Partington, Sydney, Australia. Well? It doesn't say anything. He's missing. Wynn's boy. They're trying to find him. Missing? That doesn't mean anything. I've put two and two together, Will. You got quite a bit of money from Jim that night. Since then, you've had money for everything. And to spare. Here, Annie. I want to know what happened that night. Where did Jim go? What became of him? I don't know, Annie. I've never heard from him since... Come away from that window. I want to talk to you. I want to know. Is that Jim's bag? The one in the attic? I told you it's my bag. I don't believe you, Will. I can tell from the way you talk something's wrong. It is Jim's bag, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, Will. I got it from the station. He asked me to keep it for him. You've seen him again? No, it was that first night. 
I don't believe you will. You are telling me the truth. I know you are. You're hiding something from me, and I've got to know. Why do you keep staring out into the garden? What is there out there all these months you've kept staring at? <gasps> oh! Oh, no, 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 no. You couldn't have done that, Will. Say, you couldn't have done that. Pull yourself together. Oh, you, you couldn't. Well, your own flesh and blood, your sister's child. It was an accident, Annie. Oh. You've got to be oh. Annie. Oh, you buried him in the garden. That's how you got your clothes so filthy that night. You killed him and buried him out there in the rain. Oh, oh, could you, how could you, Will? Oh, could you do it? We needed the money, Annie. All those bills I was out of his mind. Oh, no. Annie, Annie, Annie. Annie. Oh, how could you do it, Will? You murdered him. And all the time he's been out there in the garden. We saw who did. We never found out. No one knows the boy came in. Everything's covered up. And I went to the station and got his bag. Will, no! Will. Hey. You've hardly eaten anything. No, I don't feel as how I can eat anything. Oh, you must try, dear. It worries me. I do try, Annie, but it's no good. Don't bother about me, dear. I can't help it, Will. You don't keep up your appetite. It's so important. Well, you're the one who ought to eat more. You've always been delicate. I'm pretty strong, really. What are you looking at? Out the window, Will? The garden gate... It's open again. The latch must have gone. You shut it, didn't you? Uh, no. I mean, after breakfast, I told you to, I know. dear. Well? Well, I can't. What, dear? I can't go out there anymore. Ever since last month, when oh, I oh, found yeah. out when you well, told it, me... It's all right, dear. All the same, <laughs> since last month, it has been different. More like it used to be. Oh. What's the matter, dear? Well. What is it, dear? These past few weeks. It's so wonderful. I'm almost glad that it's happened. You've been fine, Annie. Oh, no. Yes, you have, Annie. Fine. I don't know how you stuck it. It must have been awful for you that night you found out. It was adding it all to myself that made me as jumpy as I was. Oh, Lord, you don't know what Oh, was. I do now. It has been a sort of help, you know, Annie. I didn't mean you to know, Annie. I did everything I could, but I couldn't help showing it sometimes. Things kept cropping up and scaring me stiff. And when I felt I was showing it, it made me worse. Yes. And those books on poison trials and all that, I couldn't keep away from them, but they didn't help. And now, ever since that night last month, it's been different. Mm. Having someone else to share it with. Even though we haven't talked about it. Oh, and don't let's talk about it anymore now. All right, dear. How much are you spending a week now, Annie? Uh, do you mean all together? Yes. Well, about five pounds, I suppose. Might be a little more. Why, dear? I was only thinking it's funny, isn't it, how badly we wanted money. We haven't got much out of it, have we? Fat lot of use it's been, really. No, except that we've been able to send Winnie away to good school. Oh, I do wish you hadn't quarreled with her just before she left last week. Well, I couldn't help it, could I? I didn't want her going out to dances with men of the sort she told us about any more than you did, kissing them and all. Made me very angry when she was so brazen about it. Very angry indeed. Will? What, dear? What made her say that about Madam Collins? What do you mean, dear? Oh, when you shouted at Winnie and she said that she was no worse than you... Oh, she didn't know what she was saying. She was talking wild. She said something about Madame Collins being here when we came back from Bournemouth. Well, she wasn't here, was she? Of course not. When he was off her head. Well, what ever made her think of Madame Collins? I can't imagine what she had in mind. If she was angry, she'd have said anything. But she must have had some reason. Well, if she had, I don't know anything about it. Well, she hasn't written you, has she? Written? 
Madam Collins, I mean. Whatever makes you think that? Well, that letter a fortnight ago, just after she left for France, I couldn't help seeing the envelope with the foreign stamps and all. Well, I told, told you, any I had a line from Parsons, who used to be at the bank, who's at the Paris branch now. Oh? I told you about the money, didn't I? No. Well, I meant to. He said he was down in his luck and might be fired if he didn't find 300 pounds. Well, we don't spend much, so I thought I'd send it. He'll pay it back. He's satisfied now? Yes. You don't think I'd let you down, do you, Annie? Oh, no, I know you wouldn't really. But, but oh, Will, I, I couldn't bear to think that you'd been untrue to me. If I thought that, I, I don't think I could go on. I'll kill myself. Don't, Annie. There's never been anything. I swear. Oh, I know, dear uh, Billy. I'm just silly. <laughs> I trust you will. Always. Of course, dear. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling rather poorly oh. again. I think I'll go upstairs and lie down for a bit. Will you wake me when it's time for tea? All right, dear. moment, Will. How's Annie? Oh, she's better, thanks very much. Charlie better. She had quite a good night. The missus and I just did, you know. Fake this check, told us. You have had a time. Yes, yeah, she was feeling poorly for a few days, and then she got wet through coming back from shopping one night. What is it now? Fortnight? Yes. Sure it's all right me dropping in? Oh, yes, Annie will have a nap now, I expect. I've just fetched a tray down. Oh. Missus was very anxious to know the latest... She thought there might be something she could do. I don't think there is anything Charlie thinks all the same. Got all the help you need, I expect. I said you'd have got someone in. No, I haven't got anyone, but I'm all right. Huh? You haven't got anyone? Who's doing the nursing and, and the house and everything? I am. What? Cooking and all for over a fortnight? Yes, I've managed all right. Oh, look here. There's my missus just itching to come in. Wouldn't let her give you a hand. No, it's all right. I can manage. Well, just as you like, of course. One of the doctor didn't say you were to have help. Oh, he did at first. He wanted me to have a nurse in. I suppose he didn't think I could do it. But he said yesterday that he was very pleased with the way she'd been looked after. Oh, good. How long before she'll be about again? I'm afraid it'll be some little time, Charlie. You see, the pneumonia's left her so weak and yeah. she can't move much without being helped. Still, she's really on the mend now. Ah, oh, that's the main thing. Oh, it's everything. Well, I expect you've got plenty to do. I'll get back and report to the missus. You might thank her for the offer. It's very good of her, tell her. Right. And if there should be anything I can do... Thanks. If there is, I'll let you know, Charlie. <laughs> I'm coming. Hello, Will. Rita, what are you doing here? I thought... Well, and what have you to say for yourself? Now, what is it? Why have you come here? Do you not guess? I come to find out why you do not answer letters. But you mustn't come here. You must go away at once. My wife... I'm not afraid of your wife. You don't understand. She's been ill. She's terribly ill. She's upstairs now. Well... And don't you see? She'll hear you. She must not know you're here. It would upset but her. But I wish to talk to you. Not here. You can't. But I have come from France on purpose to talk to you. Shh, don't speak so loud. She'll hear you. I don't care. Now look here, Rita. It's no use for coming here. You've had all you're going to get from me. That is what you think, I eh? mean it. I won't keep on paying like this. You can kill it. I shall not go until I'm ready. If you don't go, Rita, I shall... Have... What will you do? Listen, I will tell you something. If you will meet me somewhere this afternoon, I will go now. But it must be very soon. I can't. I can't leave Annie alone in the house. Oh, you are so fond of her now, eh? Yes. Yes, I am. What? That old bundle of rags? You keep your filthy mouth shut. You're not going to talk about her. You're not fit to. 
She's worth 50 of you any day. Mm, yes, yes, I am Yes, sure. she is. If you've got anything else to say about her... No. What I wish to say is about you and me. Well, I'm not going to listen. I'll finish with you. I wish to heaven I'd never set eyes on you. You're a dirty little blackmailer. And you won't get another penny out of me, see? No. Suppose I say to you that I must have 500 pounds. You can clear out of here. That's what you can do and never come back. Suppose I refuse. Suppose I go upstairs and tell your wife a few things. You wouldn't dare. You wouldn't tell my wife. Oh, wouldn't I? I'll tell her all about those two weeks while she was away at Bournemouth. There any time to frighten me. If you do not give me the money, I am going up those stairs and tell her everything. I'll turn you over to the police. That's what I'll do. And then I suppose your wife, she will not know eh? your name and all the papers. No, no, no. It will all come out. How I visited you here while she was away. How we met for supper in quiet little restaurants where no one recognized us. Oh, yes, yes, you are. <laughs> now, we've wasted enough time. I want 500 pounds. 500 pounds or I will go upstairs to your wife. I will tell her everything. All right, I'll make a check out for you. Now you are being wise. Just give me the check and I will never speak to you again about anything. to Dr. Atkinson instead of bringing him up to see me. Mm, dear. Very well. I tried to go downstairs myself. Got to... Oh, dear. Oh, I'm weaker than I thought. I'm much weaker. I have to be careful on this. Oh, they must be in the living room. And the door's closed. That's a woman's voice talking to Will. It's a woman. I'll open the door a little. I must know. I shall never forget you. <gasps> it's Madame Collins. I think of the afternoon, just at this time, when your wife was away, and you sat in that old chair waiting. And while you look out the window, I creep in and put my hands to cover your eyes, and then you jump out of your chair and you hold me in your arms and give me a long kiss. Do you think I forget that? What was that? What? Sound out the door. No. Shut. All right, all right. Now, here's your check and take it and clear out. I don't want to ever to see you. Out. Now, there, there, that's the doctor. I will go. Out the back way. He mustn't see you. Don't worry. I will let myself out. No one will know that I was here. Please hurry up before he tries the door. Goodbye, Will. Now, go on. Get out of here. I don't want to see you again. You will not, I promise you. I'm closing my shop for good and taking my husband to southern France. Now, hurry. Through the kitchen. I know the way. I'm coming. I'm coming. Is everything all right, Mr. Marble? Oh, yes. Quiet, Doctor. Oh, you were so long. Uh, I was afraid she might be worse. No, if anything, she's a bit brighter today. Ah. She drank her fruit juice? Every drop. Well, I'll go up to her. You're not looking too well yourself, Mr. Marble. Oh, I'm all right, Doctor. I'm fine. If you're not careful, we'll be having you down, too. Then you'll have to have a nurse in the house. Whether you want her or not. There's no need to worry about me, Doctor. Did you take a chair out in the garden, as I said? No, not yet, Doctor. I haven't had much time. Well, you must try. Get out in the sun all you can. Very well, Doctor. I'll go up now. Mr. Marble. Doctor, is anything the matter? Yes. Is, is, is she bad again? She's dead. Dead? How can she be? It 
can only just have happened. Not more than a few minutes, I should say. It's... it's extraordinary. Dead? Dead? She uh, appears to have been poisoned. What? Is there any poison in this house? No. At least not where she could get it. There is some stuff I've had for photography. I've had it for some time. Where? It's out there in the old cupboard by the door. She couldn't have got it, possibly. Wait a minute. This cupboard? Yes. Is this the bottle? Yes. But it was half full. I see. When did you give her the fruit juice? About three quarters of an hour ago. Why? Did you see her drink it? Yes, there can't have been anything in that. I took it up and I didn't leave her until I brought the glass down with the other things. Where is that glass? It's on the tray out there in the cupboard. I put it down when someone came to the door. I'll show you. I said, well, look. But it was on the tray. I know it was. Did you take it? I got this glass from beside her bed, Mr. Marble. That's the one. There was only the one glass. I brought it down. It was there on the tray. A doctor. She couldn't have got down alone. No. Then how did the glass get upstairs? That's what I want to know. Annie? 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 Nag, nag, nag. That's all she did. Nag. Morning to night. Uh, if only this house could talk. Marble was convicted, wasn't he, Mr. Hammond? That he was. Judge said it was one of the clumsiest murders on record. Couldn't have been a plainer case. Motive was there. The other woman, that is. They proved the poison was in the cupboard. And they proved that she couldn't have come downstairs alone. They proved that while that she was so ill, he wouldn't have anyone in. And then to put the lid on it, all those books about poison and crime. Well, what about it? Think you'd like to live in a house where a man murdered his wife? <laughs> I don't mind. Not superstitious. I'll take it. Of course, I will have to do a bit of repairing. Mm. While I'm having the house fixed, I'll get rid of all those weeds in the garden. My wife wouldn't have a house without a flower garden. <laughs> we'll dig up that backyard and plant it with roses. Well, if you're planting rose bushes, we'll have to dig deep. Yes, very deep. Sir Charles Lawson in Fletcher Markham's production of Payment Deferred by Jeffrey Dell and C.S. Forrester. Principals in our cast tonight. In the foreground, Will Marble was played, of course, and very wonderfully played by Mr. Lawton, whom theatergoers will soon be seeing in his forthcoming production of Galileo. Annie Marble was played by Hester Sondergaard. Jim Medland was Bert Tanswell. Madam Collins was Ruth York. Charlie Hammond was played by Hedley Rennie. Also on hand, Mary Kimber, Horace Braham, and Robert Dryden. Next week from Studio One, a very special broadcast. A story that is counted amongst the most arresting and memorable novels of our day. It's about two people in love who are confronted by one of the great problems in our society. Racial intolerance. The story first found acclaim as a Collier's Magazine serial, then in book form as a literary guild selection and is soon to be produced as a motion picture by Samuel Goldwyn. Next week, we're bringing you our version for listening of Earth and High Heaven by Gwethlyn Graham. And as for our visiting star, she is one of the finest and most consistently rewarding actresses of Hollywood, Miss Geraldine Fitzgerald. 
We hope you'll be with us. Until then, until next week, and Geraldine Fitzgerald in Earth and High Heaven, this is Butcher Marco with a good night and thank you from all of us in Studio One. Thank you.